So if we go everything so far, then um, we've understood the basic idea of what capacitor is in terms of storing charge according to the voltage that's applied across it. We understand the um, maths of doing the discharge equation, Q equals Q0 e to the minus 2 over CR and that kind of stuff. So we've just got a couple of little things to uh, finish off and the first one is called the time constant. So we're going to look at what the time constant of a capacitor circuit means and we're going to um, look at how we can find this time constant and specifically trying to look at how we can do that using logs, Okay, which is, uh, as we've said before, a key skill in A2 for us to try to get our heads around. Uh, so this thing called the time constant, it's a little bit like half-life is in radioactive decay, uh, but slightly confusingly, rather than being the time taken for the uh, voltage or the current to halve, it's the time taken for the current to fall to 0 0.368 of its initial value. Now that looks like a rather sort of strange number to choose. A half seemed like a much more sensible number. Um, but there's a very good reason for that, which we'll see. So here's our initial current, I0. Here's our current at some time, T, I. And if we make T, the time, equal to CR, the capacitance times the resistance, then what we find is we've got I equals I to the, um, E to the minus. T becomes CR, CR over CR is obviously 1. So I get I0, the initial current, E to the minus 1. Well, E to the minus 1, 1 over E, okay, is 0 0.368. Okay, so although this number is a bit tricky, it makes it really easy to find the number because if you know the capacitance and you know the resistance, then you can work out the time constant very easily. So let's suppose, for example, I had a um, 2 millifarad capacitor and I discharge it through a 10 kilo ohm resistor. I'd have 2 times 10 to the minus 3 times 10 times 10 to the 3, 20 seconds. So I would know that after 20 seconds, um, the voltage would be 0.368 of the initial voltage. The current would be 0.368 of the initial current. The charge stored would be 0.368 of the initial charge. Because remember, all these equations, Q equals Q0 e to the minus T over CR, it doesn't matter. I can use I equals I0, V equals V0. They're all the same. Okay, so although this number looks very strange and um, you do need to know this number, if you can remember it's 1 over E or E to the minus 1, you could just put it in your calculator and get it, okay? So the time constant is the time it takes for the initial conditions to fall to 0.368 of that value. Uh, just one more thing, if we went to 2CR, then all we'd have is um, I equals 0.368 squared times I naught or cubed and so on. Okay so one way to do that is simply to set up a circuit um, to measure the initial current to work out 0.368 of that value to time how long it takes to get that and this will give us a time constant for that circuit CR. Okay so what we're effectively doing here is we're getting our favorite graph we're working out this Let's suppose then that's 10 volts. We're waiting for the time for it to reach 3.68 volts. We're getting that time, and this time here is our time constant. Okay, so that T equals CR. Okay, but a better way to do it would be this. Okay, so if we take that graph which we've seen as a curve, what we'd really like is always to turn that graph into a straight line. Well, we know the equation of that curve, I equals I0 e to the minus 2 over CR. Um, if we take logs of both sides, then we end up with log I equals minus 2 over CR times the log of I0. Okay? There's a little log rule in here for you. I've taken the logs of both sides, but then I've got the log, sorry, the log of AB is the log of A plus the log of B. So I've split this up here into the log of A plus the log of B. Okay, if you look at this equation, that means that if we plot a graph with the natural log of I on this axis um, and T on this axis, what we'll get is a straight line graph with a negative gradient 
and that gradient will be 1 over CR. So we find the gradient, that's 1 over CR. We find the intercept, and the intercept is the log of I0. Okay, so we can plot that graph, and that's a better way for us to get a straight line um, to work out the value for the time constant. Okay, so I'm going to get the gradient uh, G equals minus 1 over CR. So CR equals minus 1 over the gradient. That's a better way for us to find CR than just trying to read this one point off the graph. Okay, another thing just to mention quickly in this um, is that all of this was quite hard and there is a method called a constant current method. Um, so what we do in this is we charge capacitor up and uh, once we've got it charged, we can discharge it through this circuit. So this is initially charged to um, a voltage, let's say 6 volts. We put it in this circuit, and we know that what we're expecting is to get a graph of I against T, once again, like this. But what we can do very cleverly is, as this voltage drops, we can decrease the resistance. So here I've got a variable resistor. If I decrease this resistance... Okay, I can say I equals V over R, but I know the voltage is going to be dropping. But if I make the resistance drop at the same rate, then I can actually keep I constant. So I can make the graph this shape. Okay, eventually I get to the stage where I've turned that resistor right down and I can't keep the current constant any longer. But hopefully that looks pretty much like that. That's a much easier way of working out the area under that graph Q, okay, to get the capacitance. Okay, this is the constant current method. It's just a simpler way for us to work out the capacitance. In, in fact, the math is a lot simpler, although the physical action of keeping that current constant is actually very difficult.